Hello everyone and welcome to another Minecraft update video where we get to learn what we can expect for the next big update of Minecraft which is 1.21. As you might know the features of the next big Minecraft update are often revealed to us each year at the Minecraft live event and this year's was no different. However the next update was not the sole focus of the show, we would also learn the winner of this year's mob boat which was between the crab, armadillo and penguin. I casted my vote and I did so inside of the bedrock event server for the mob vote which I actually thought was really cool. I wanted to mention it here because after the Minecraft live event I learned that the server is actually going to stay open for the next 23 hours. The world is actually a fair bit of fun. You can go exploring looking for chests full of currency to spend at the village of vendor and there's mini games too. They're not the most sophisticated games, but there's some parkour, a dropper map, and a roller coaster. Plenty to do and see, so since the server is still up, I thought I'd mention it in case you've got bedrock and you want to check it out. The show also highlighted several times that next year would be the 15th anniversary of Minecraft's release, and they've got special plans in the work. However, specifics weren't revealed, but we were given this interesting image because it just so happens the game has sold over 300 million copies. And these statistics were made between September and October of this year over 30 days, which is kind of crazy to put into perspective just how much this game gets played. So yeah, big things to look out for next year. And then in the coming weeks, we will be getting our first taste of 1.21 in the snapshots. But of course, we are still in the 1.20.3 development cycle. This has introduced the ability to put items inside of decorated pots. And if you want to find out more, of course you can find that video here on my channel. I will encourage you to subscribe, however, so you can catch the 1.21 snapshots, which we've been told will be coming soon in a matter of weeks. But no specific date was actually given, so we'll have to wait and see. Now before we get to seeing the footage from this update, I want to mention that Mojang are taking the same approach as they did with the Trails and Tales update. What we're going to see today is things that will make it into the game, but there is other stuff that may be in development too, but that's not being revealed to us just yet. And like with the last update, we don't know the name of it yet, that will be revealed next year in 2024. I'd also like to mention that the explanation of what we're seeing this year was very clear. We get to see the new features in action and the Mojang developers talk to each other asking important questions and so this time we've got a real clear picture of what we can expect. So I will do my usual thing of commenting over the footage but if you would like to go and check it out for yourself there'll be a link in the description box down below and I do recommend that you go check it out because they also did just a really great job of explaining everything. This was done by the Minecraft developers simply bumping into one another and asking questions about the things going on around them. This first thing is the trial chamber. We have a new structure that's going to be introduced to the Minecraft game. It's going to house copper blocks and what looks like a new variant of tough. I am actually guessing there just based on the color tone of the block but to me it kind of looks like we have some new variants of tough which is really cool. In the structure itself, you may notice that there are some new copper blocks too. One of these is the copper bulb, which we'll get to in more detail in a bit. There are also copper grates, and I think later in the video you will notice that there are now copper trapdoors as well. All of this is really exciting. As you can see, the structure itself can be quite large in scale. However, the main room we're seeing at the moment is the corridor room. And it's been described that there can be generation with one corridor and a couple of different types of room attached to it. And then other ones that could have sprawling corridors with many rooms attached to it. So the variety in size here could be really big. Oh, and was that a copper door that I just noticed? Yeah, didn't see that the first time round. There's also these marked copper blocks too. I don't know what they're going to be called, but yeah, new blocks, always a good thing. So a classic Minecraft move, pillaring up the cobblestone, that block is the copper grate by the way, and then we can see the other one which I don't know the name for. So we meet another Minecraft developer, and then we get to know about these decorative blocks. And I think she actually says that they're tough here. Pretty sure that's the word she uses. If it's not that word, something that sounded very similar. And they point out the nice design, they talk about the copper bulbs, you can also see the copper grates again in its oxidized form. 
Agnes then hints at how she's used these copper bulbs in a village, and we're going to see that village later. It has what look like polished tough blocks with walls and stairs as well, and I actually found it in my notes they did indeed call these tough blocks. So then we have a transitional moment where Agnes walks around and we get to see the copper door again, which I think looks really fantastic. And they keep hinting at this theme of tinkering whilst talking about how players will use these blocks to express themselves and get creative. But tinkering seems to be a key word for this theme. So we then head up the stairs with Agnes to another floor in this structure and she points out that there is a supply chest. Who knows what sort of supplies we'll find inside of it? Will there be any new items? I don't know, but the next thing we get introduced to is the copper bulb. So the idea here is that the more oxidized this block is, the dimmer it is. So it can be configured to emit multiple light levels. As you saw in the video, this is done by scraping the copper bulb with an axe, and it goes through the same four stages that copper does. It looked like the first one may have not emitted any light at all, but we'll have to get the game to find out. And just like copper blocks, we can expect these things to be waxed by honeycomb. So you can change it with an axe and you can preserve the light level with the honeycomb. It's also been communicated that this stuff interacts with redstone. You can control it with a redstone pulse to turn it on and off. This is different from a redstone lamp which you activate with a lever and there's also plans to make it work with a comparator so if you can pulse it with redstone and change the output of the comparator you're essentially getting a one block t flip-flop now what we have next is the trial spawner yes a new type of mob spawner as you can see it's got some orange pixels on the corners that you can kind of see in the dark and when you activate this thing there's going to be a load of particle effects but what's interesting about this spawner is that it actually scales up the amount of mobs that it spawns based on how many players it finds nearby. This spawner happens to have packed ice around it and that means that it's going to spawn strays and it's not going to spawn them continuously. There's actually going to be a set amount in total and also a set amount that can be spawned at one time. All of this stuff is going to be highly customizable because it's powered by MBT, which map makers can take advantage of and give all sorts of properties to this mob cage. So it's going to be very manipulatable. And as you'll see here, it can also give you loot after you've done beating all of the mobs that it's spawned. Now you can break this thing, but it will take as long as it takes to break reinforced deep slate. So the idea is if you really need to get this thing out of your world, you can. But otherwise, you can leave it there for other players to find in the future because this thing actually has a really long cooldown. Again, something that can be customized. And then later on, other players can come together and enjoy the challenge again. And if you returned with more friends, it would spawn more enemies because it adapts to the amount of players that are nearby. And best of all, I think, it's also explosion proof. So no creepers annoyingly destroying that mob spawner you just found. So in this next part of the video, Agnes heads into a village and encounters a few Minecraft streamers. And in the background and around, we can see those copper drop doors. There are the tough stairs. You'll also see like polished tough blocks and tough walls as well. While we're waiting to see the next feature, a couple of things I wanted to mention about the structure we've just seen underground is that it only generates in the overworld. It's also described as being common to find, but this could change based on community feedback. And as I mentioned, the size can vary from relatively small to being really, really big. And so with those details noted, we can now move on to the next feature, which is the one that I am most excited for. Let's just say this. With Redstone, you can automate crafting. Yes, you're about to see what will be one of the most well-received blocks I think ever added to this game. The ability to automate crafting with the crafter and I love how this thing looks like it's got a face. But of course what we're going to love more is that we can indeed automate crafting with it. So this thing works with droppers and hoppers, it interacts with redstone, you can feed items inside of it and you can automate the crafting process. But as we see the GUI here, you can see it can be configured. This first example however doesn't show us how you can toggle the slots in the crafting table. Sorry, the crafter, but we will we will see how to do that shortly. And then when you power it with redstone, it spits the item out. It's kind of like a dropper, except it's got the items inside of it and the recipe. So then two of the developers show us something a little bit more advanced. Next. Uh, oh yeah, there's this thing about wanting to be taller than the sugar cane. 
Look, I'm including absolutely every second of this video so that you don't miss anything, okay? <laughs> Is that alright? So the two developers have created a contraption here that will automatically craft swords. We can see the crafter there with a hopper pointing into it. There's a hopper on one side, a dropper on the other, and the interface is toggleable. So as you'll see here, we can select which slots it will let items be fed into or not. So then the contraption feeds in two iron and a stick and a redstone pulse powers this block and then it turns it into a sword. You might have also noticed when the first iron ingot went in, it showed a nugget on the side. So if you happen to power it at that point in time, it would then craft nine nuggets. I'm actually quite curious to know what would happen if it crafts more than one item at once. Does it continuously spit them out? That's something we'll have to learn about later with snapshots. But yeah, this thing crafts anything that a crafting table does. It doesn't require any other sorts of power. You just power it with redstone and you could even chain these things together for complex crafting. But now we see the developers are gearing up. They're using the crafter to make their armor, put it in a dispenser to equip them because now we're going to see what you could say is a mini boss mob. Found in the combat trial chambers and most likely spawned from a trial spawner, this new mob is called the Breeze and it kind of looks like an alternative to the Blaze. Can you see it? Yeah, it's got like some particle effects drifting around its body which is similar to the Blaze. This mob however is all about providing the player with a really interesting challenge and a fight. It has an attack that it calls a Wind Charge. And this attack has a blast radius of just a few blocks where it can deal knockback damage. But if it collides with the player, it will then actually cause them damage. When it uses this attack, the mob jumps away. However, in the video, they describe it as blowing. So the idea is that this mob use winds so it can push players back and interact with the environment around it which includes buttons and trap doors. So there are dispensers nearby, and this thing can activate the buttons that activate the dispensers, so they shoot arrows at you, and then there's trap doors in the ground that they can activate and the player can fall into. They also have a new particle effect as well, which helps differentiate the type of damage that they're doing when they attack. Now, we yet to know if it drops an item, but the footage that we're watching is currently on repeat because they just gave us a minute of this. It felt like such a tease. However, now I can comment rather directly on what we're seeing. You saw the attack hit the player there. There's a lot of action going on real quick, and there was it. You could see the mob, the breeze, jumping a couple of times. Man, the cuts here are really quick, but if we keep our eye on it, you can see it jumping up, which I think is kind of cool. Having a mob that like jumps around really dynamically could be... Quite interesting for Minecraft, honestly. And there you can see the trapdoors being activated by its uh, wind charge attack. And pay attention here, it also turns that lever on which lights up the lamp. So this mob can turn redstone on and off. Pretty impressive. Now, that was all of the things we got to learn about 1.20.1. But wait, there is one more thing. With the penguin eliminated, the winner of the mob vote this year was the armadillo. <laughs> Yes, the Minecraft mob, I think we actually learned the least about, but we know that it drops the scoot and that can be used to make armor for doggies and that is the reason I think that it got voted in because many people love pets in this game and they want to keep them alive. So congrats to all of you that voted for the armadillo. I had a feeling it might win, but personally I decided to vote for the crab as I like the idea of having that utility for extended reach. Anyways, that brings us to the end of this video. Leave a comment down below. Let me know what you think about 1.20.1. I am very excited. I think this could easily shape up to be a really memorable Minecraft update. So I'm hyped. Make sure you subscribe to the channel to catch those snapshots in the future. And I'll see you soon with another one. Bye-bye.